Hi and welcome to Reseller News. My name is Rich Bassini. Today is October 8, 2018. Thank you for tuning in. I just want to start off by saying thank you to all the new subscribers who recently subscribed to me. It is greatly appreciated. I hope you like the content and I hope you keep coming back for more. Before I get into the reseller news, I just wanted to share this uh, really quick with you. Um, last night I made two sales. Well, I don't know, two sales, right? Anyway, I had packaged up my items and I wanted to ship them off to the post office this morning. And um, when I went to the post office, uh, they have a drop box there. And I seen the drop box was full. So I knocked on the door because I heard voices back there. There were people apparently working. And uh, as I'm knocking on the door, I hear uh, the, uh, the, they go, the, the post was closed. I said, I know. I go, I got two packages here. I would like to give them so you can put them in the back over the back room. I said, the machine over here is uh, all stuffed up. It's got packages on, you know, it, you can't open it up. So um, she's like, oh, I'm sorry. Can't do anything right now if you don't have the keys to it. I said, okay, no problem. But what I found ironic, um, just to share this real quick, is um, somebody had left three Amazon packages on top of the machine. Now, not for nothing, but that is the most crazy, craziest thing to do, uh, to leave packages in an open area like that, because for the simple reason is that post office I deal with, my local one, is open 24 hours a day. You know, because if you have a P.O. box, you can go to all different hours of night, as far as I know. Um, but they left three Amazon packages, and you can see, because the boxes were branded with Amazon on it. And I'm saying to myself, why would any per person want to take a chance of doing that there? You know, they probably figured, oh, the box is closed because it's got that level in there, and you go, you drop it down. You have a tree, you guys know it. The post office has those drop boxes. And the package I have would fit in there, but unfortunately, it was all filled up. But the thing I'm trying to say is these people create their own problems for themselves. You know, you know, you, why would, you know, now most likely, if those are stolen, which I believe they probably will be, no doubt, even though they have a camera there and you say, well, we can cat, you know, we, we know who the perpetrator is who took it. Uh, by the time you do all your research and investigating or whatever, um, <laughs> you could, it could have been so easy just to hold them over the next day. But, um, yeah, there they were, sitting bird's eye view. I was going to take a picture of it. I said, I don't want to do that there, you know. But it was three packages, you know, two two boxes with Amazon on it and one Amazon envelope in there. And I'm sitting right on top of the machine. So, so these people, I, I don't know what they're thinking, but th that's an accident waiting to happen there. You can Those definitely, if those packages get to those people on time or get there, period, it'll be a miracle. But I just had to share that with you guys. But anyway... Uh, without further ado, I'm going to split the screen again. I'm going to bump out of here. And we're going to jump right into reseller news. And I had to use my glass for this because I can't see this stuff. Uh, here we got over here these next, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, eight uh, windows open up there are going to be from ecommercebytes.com. So I'm not going to constantly repeat it. For those who are uh, new to my uh, YouTube channel subscribers, um, I do go over the websites, uh, but I do not read them verbatim. I will tell you where I got the information from, and then it's totally up to you if you want to pick up where I left off. I'll give you the URL, and then you know you'll, you'll know where to uh, find this if you choose to do so. Um, this came out yesterday, and I guess I'm just going to give you the URL right now. It's uh, www.ecommercebytes.com. Okay. And the, uh, this one came out, like I said, yesterday, September, uh, Sunday, October 7, 2018. And it's over here, Amazon fraud case underscores problem with new eBay policy. Now, it goes on over here to say, an Amazon buyer has been indicted after the feds accused him of committing fraud using 501 allegedly false Amazon accounts to place approximately 1,227 orders. The government alleges he obtained over $200,000 in merchandise, replacements, and refunds by falsely claiming the merchandise has not been delivered or was damaged. It goes on to say, while an indictment is an allegation and is not evidence of guilt, the very idea that it has been, uh, been possible for the single buyer to commit $200,000 in false claims is breathtaking to the small sellers who sell on Amazon, eBay, Etsy, and elsewhere. Let me just scroll down a little more here. Uh, like I said, again, this is a lot to read. I don't want to keep reading because, like I said, i got a lot of windows open up. But it just goes on to say it is especially pro uh, problematic given that marketplace mandates sellers uh, offer generous return policies. 
So you see, folks, people sometimes they do things, you know, that are shady. And, uh, you know, it makes it look bad for the rest of us, unfortunately, who try to do the right things. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, the thing in life is you, you're going you're gonna to always have things of this nature come up every now and then. The best thing anyone, any one of us could do as uh, sellers is to just abide by the rules, play by their game, and that's it, play the game that way. You know, it's, it's, their, it's, their, you know, it's their website, you know, and if you want to be on it, uh, just follow the rules and regulations, you know. But uh, I'll keep you posted and I'll let you know if there's anything that changes within this area, if, nothing, if something new comes up. I'm going to bump out this window, go to the next one. It says over here. Uh, this uh, again. It, oh, this one came out Friday, October fifth. Uh, sometimes, folks, just to let you know for the new sellers, I mean the new uh, subscribers. Uh, sometimes the I do the resale news. I can't always get to it on that specific date. So you might find news that might be a couple days old, a week old, whatever. Uh, I don't want to go back to anything, you know, unless it's something I want to, you know, refresh and bring it to your attention. Uh, I'll, you know, go back to something old. But for the most part, I try to keep it fresh with new content. This came out Friday, October fifth, twenty eighteen. And uh, as you can see, it says over here, eBay mulls the fate of TurboList and why. Um, it goes on, eBay is mulling the fate over, uh, of its TurboList inventory management tool and may integrate it into Seller Hub and begin uh, charging a fee for those who use it, uh, according to the sellers who took the new survey this week. All right? uh, eBay is going to support uh, to end support of TurboList. Uh, uh, oh, wait. eBay was going to end support for Turbolist. That's why I'm, I wanted to read up right because I remember they said we're going to get rid of it. Uh, Lister in June of 2017, since it was investing all its resources into a new seller hub. But eBay delayed the tool's demise because it said that Turbolist features you rely on are not yet available in seller hub. Um, I used to use uh, Turbolist. I liked it because when I was doing bulk listings, uh, it was pretty cut and dry, pretty quick. Um, I was sorry to hear it end. You know, I remember listening to it on eBay radio when they were talking about this here, and uh, I really hate to see it go. I kind of liked it. I, I liked it. I liked the way it was. I liked the format. I thought it was for me. I thought it was pretty easy, and uh, I liked it. I really did. But um, I don't use it. Needless to say, you know, I don't bother with that. I just do my regular normal listings like I did before I even found out about Turbolista. So um, for those who still use it, you know, uh, it, from what I'm reading up here. Uh, it's going to be charging a fee for those who use it according to this. So it's right up here. And uh, if you want to read the story, just to you know, go over or pick up where I left off. You know, it's uh, it's the one for Friday, October fifth, twenty eighteen. eBay mulls the fate of Turbo List and why. That's the story you're going to be looking for. Let's move right along. Here's another one here from e-commerce bites, and this one came out Saturday, October sixth, twenty eighteen. Amazon incident highlights seller hunger to talk to buyers. Okay, let's move this down a little here. It says Amazon buyers said they received a notice about inappropriate disclosure of the email addresses, but not enough, uh, but not th through a hack or a sol uh, software voluntarily uh, vulnerability. I'm sorry, rather than uh, rather through an employee who allegedly disclosed information to a third-party seller in violation of Amazon's policy. Then the post is over on Reddit here. Uh, you can check it out if you like. When you hover over it, it's an active hyperlink. It'll take you to Reddit, and then you could read the rest of it. And then it just goes on to say, here, I just read this part, and I'm going to move to the next one. It says, hello, we are writing to let you know that the email address was disclosed by Amazon employee to a third-party seller on, the, on our website in violation of our policy. As a result, the employee has been terminated, and we are supporting the law enforcement in prosecution. Wow. The third-party seller has been blocked from selling on our site. No other information related to your account was shared. This is not a result of anything uh, you have done, and there is no need to, for you to take any action. Thank you, Amazon Customer Service. And you can read the rest of it here, folks. Um, for those who do sell on Amazon, um, I really need to start selling on Amazon <laughs> because sales have been really dead lately. Uh, but anyway, you could check this story out, and this one came out on Saturday, October 6, 2018. So let's move right along. Uh, okay, this one came out Friday, October 5th, 2018. Amper, uh, eBay hampers seller efforts to collect sales tax. Okay, this was written to Einer. Steiner. Is, she's, the, uh, I believe, the founder of uh, the e-commerce bites. And it goes on to say, Dear Einer, thanks for all the great articles. They have been very beneficial. I have a question you might have already addressed, and I missed it. <laughs> Due to the Wayfair decision uh, and uh, the various states' tax legislation issued, 
we need to register for a sales tax number and it upstates as which as we exceed the number of transactions threshold usually 200 we are registered in um we register within this uh, with the states and put the tax appropriate uh, and put the tax appropriate tax okay percentages in the tax table in ebay and expected sales to be charged on orders for those states however we checked the orders the next day and found our sales tax was not charged so that's going to be a problem if the system's not working properly you know this is going to be really be interesting with this here i um I, I mentioned, I expressed myself once before how I felt about this year and what I would do to make it simplified, but, you know, who am I, all right? I mean, you know, unless you go to, you know, to Washington and you start talking to the, 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 the congressmen and senators over there and try to get this thing changed, uh, I don't think it's going to happen. But my take on this was how, how I would have done it, and I said it once before. Um, wherever your nexus is, wherever you do business, right, if you're, like, I'm in the state of New York, so for me personally, I would do everything, you know, any all the transactions, all the sales I made in New York, I would collect those sales taxes from the buyers and then, you know, remit it to the, uh, you know, New York State Department of Taxation. This way, we each cover our own state we do business in. But this here, the, the way they want to do it where if someone, now I, at least I, the way I understand, I know they're going to be, when it's fully gets implemented, I don't know if it's going to be the 45 states, 48 states, whatever that we have to collect sales tax on all of them. Now, eBay say it's something that they're going to have some kind of, I guess it's going to be embedded in a system where it's going to help out collect the sales tax, but we're going to be responsible, which makes sense. Uh, we're going to be responsible for, to submit those taxes to appropriate states and different jurisdictions or whatever lo uh, localities. But um, I think I, I, my personal take, this is mine. I could be making a mountain out of a molehill here, but I think me personally, I would go my route uh, it's the same thing. People still getting their sales tax, but I guess they probably figure, well, if that's the case, then everybody's going to all different place. It, it doesn't matter because we got if it's going to be collected, it, it doesn't matter. They still get just you guys, you know, the states where you're doing business are still going to get their sales tax, you know. But I guess people probably figure, yeah. But if I buy in New York, you know, if you're a person who's in California, you're buying in New York, you're saving on the sales tax, whatever. I, I don't think it's going to work that way, so per se. I mean, well, it could. If they do it, you know, if they're going to go that route there, you know, that um, we got to collect in all different localities in different states, yes, then it, then it could be a problem that way. But I still think my personal take on it is wherever you do business, you collect. That's what I've been doing since I started this uh, here. Uh, I collected the taxes from all the, you know, from the buyers in New York. I have a file that has all the New York, uh, you know, purchases from buyers within my state. I tally it up. Boom, shoot it off to New York Department of uh, Taxation and Finance, and I'm done with it. So, you know, it's not like my state is being chipped out of money. They're getting the money from the sales I make. So I think that would be a better way to go. But like I said, again, you know, uh, I, I guess, we, you know, as time went on, we could see this happening, you know. But uh, we'll see. Let's let's see how it, where it plays out. Let's see. Maybe things will be a little different. Maybe things will change between now and then. Who knows, you know. I don't know. Let's move to the next one. Okay, now this is uh, this one came out October seventh, twenty eighteen. No mail on Monday, but postal workers won't be idle. <laughs> you could say that again. I went to the postal, dropped package off, and they wouldn't even take it. Uh, whatever. Um, it goes on to say over here, there's no mail service on Monday due to the Columbus Day holiday, but postal workers will be showing up at the post facilities at your local uh, at and at local congressional offices around the country to rally against the proposal to privilege, uh, privatize the U.S. Postal Service. The APW is supporting the October 8th day of action. Okay, I didn't know about this yet. Uh, press release follows. U.S. Postal Service employees join the community supporters, <clears throat> by community supporters, uh, who oppose selling off the U.S. Postal Service and private to a private corporation, will rally a hundred, in a, at 140 sites across the nation Monday, October 8th. Among the rallies, among, among them, our rallies are scheduled for Chicago, Philadelphia. That will include several members of Congress on Washington, D.C. We're rally on Freedom uh, Plaza, two blocks from the White House, and click here to see the list of rallies. Um, I wasn't aware of this, folks. Um, <laughs> I really wasn't aware this was going on. It just goes to show you. I've, you know what it is? I have been so busy doing my own things, my own research, plus I have personal thing matters I have to take care of. Uh, I didn't get a chance to read this whole thing. I wasn't even aware of this was happening here, folks. Um, but... Okay, uh, if they're going to do that there, they're going to do it. Uh, I wasn't aware of it. But anyway, if you want to check the rest of the story out, 
Again, this came out October 7, 2018, and the story you're looking for is no mail on Monday, but postal workers won't be idle. Okay, this is news to me, all right? So let's uh, bump out of here. Okay, this one here came out October 7, 2018. Facebook Marketplace ads, uh, ads online merchant deals. Okay. Matter of fact, I just want to share this very quick. I have like uh, two things I want to put on the Facebook marketplace. Um, uh, what do you call it? I have it on right now. They're both on eBay, but I'm going to do it. I don't know if I'm going to do like a cross selling, but I'm going to put it's an office chair I have on eBay. And I'm going to try putting it in the uh, Facebook marketplace. And I also have a little vintage uh, kerosene stove. It's old. You can see it's all it's listed in my uh, eBay listings. But uh, I'm going to try putting them on the Facebook marketplace, you know. I don't have a problem with people, you know, in my locality coming around the area, you know, picking stuff up. And I'm not, I'm not crazy about it, but at the same time, if it'll help speed things up and make a sale and get it out of here, the sooner the better. I like it. Um, you know, the marketplace to me is almost, it's another, it's like almost basically similar to, um, we have a thing called neighborhood uh, sale or something, a neighborhood patch type of thing, uh, where you could post stuff like that and people in a surrounding area that live in your town can come by and you know make sales or if you got stuff to give away for free uh, they'll come pick it up you know I don't have a problem with that you know but um, this is like a Craigslist type of thing too you know a Craigslist you Craigslist could do the same thing too you could put stuff up there and people you know will uh, buy from you but I'm gonna try Facebook marketplace um, I'm gonna see what happens with it. you know it's an office chair it's way too heavy to uh, ship and the little stove, the little kerosene stove I have, it's like I said, if you go to my Facebook, uh, eBay listings, uh, you'll see it there. It's a small little stove. It's kerosene. It's vintage. Uh, it can fit in a box. So that I could ship out, you know. But uh, I'm going to see. I'm going to try it out. I'm going to give it a heads up and see what happens. But anyway, let's see what the story goes on. So yeah, Facebook, market, uh, Facebook Marketplace is adding shopping, shopping and deals from e-commerce merchants and exclusive, and exclusive uh, deals from retailers. Over 33% of Facebook members use its classified style platform every month according to the company and it wants to help make it easier for users to buy and sell and not only <clears throat> from each other in a blog post this week celebrating its two-year anniversary facebook marketplace vice president deborah lou revealed uh the addition of the merchant of merchant deals uh but provided no details she also noted that the buyers and sellers can now rate each other uh, and see the help page, and you could read a little bit about that there. For more information on the rating, trading, <laughs> on the rating, a trading uh, partner, uh, know that the ratings are only available on the Facebook for iPhone and you know, or app, Android app, not on Facebook.com. Okay, whatever. It sounds good. Let's see what. Let's see where it goes from here. Okay, but you can check it out. You know the site. You see it. Let's move along. And we got over here. Now, this one here is e commerce, but it's the same thing. They have, um, what do you call it there? Uh, the classifieds. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe uh, you could advertise your stuff on this here. The classifieds are for free, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, because it says over here home, latest ads, buy ad, buy ad, or try ad free. Uh, to sign up to a response, is you got to register, which is no big deal for auction classifieds, auction mice classifieds. Ad. And this one here is. Uh, I guess this person here is getting rid of this book. You can go check out the website, but it's how to find underpriced Apple iPhones on eBay. And if you click on the site there, it'll take you to it, and uh, you can check it out from that point. Uh, there's another one from the uh, e-commerce bites classifieds, Cleora's uh, custom and fine vintage jewelry, and you can check this out. It says I've been selling jewelry since 1986 and online since 1995. I search for the unusual, rare collectible pieces. Items includes pins, necklace, earrings. Uh, brooch ring, a uh, brooch, brooch, uh, rings, cufflinks, and hand carved and shell cameos. So uh, you could check them out as well. Just go to e-commerce bites and uh, classifieds, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, it's, it's pretty good. I mean, I, I check things out on there. I like the stuff they have. I like the idea that you could um, do a free ad and stuff like that in there. So try it out. If you're not familiar with it, try it out, folks. Uh, and let's go over here. Let's close this one out. Let's close this one out. And the last one I got over here. This is the, I picked this up, I, like I said, I get a lot of alerts from all different sources, uh, folks, talking about um, eBay, Amazon, Etsy. I just have to hand pick the ones I think that might be interesting to you. So I hope uh, the stuff I put out, folks, that you get something out of it and you, you like the content, you know. I try to do my best getting the information out there to help you guys out, help me out too. 
Uh, this is new to me, like I said. I mean, I heard of it, but I didn't actually go onto the site until today. Um, it's got this is a video here, and I'm only going to play a few minutes. It's, it's a total of 14 minutes long, so I'm going to have to mute my mic. But I'm just going to let it play maybe about a minute, just letting the highlight. You can read the highlights of what it's doing. This here, uh, I think when you click on these here, step one, step two, step three, step four. Uh, that'll then you could read each one of them. You could go through the stats, but it also has over here download your copy of the rapid ranking system cheat sheet now. Now you're probably wondering, okay, where do I get it? Okay, I'm going to give you the URL right now, folks. The other ones, as you know, was from oldecommercebytes.com. This one here is the amazing uh, selling machine. Okay, so here's the URL: www.amazingsellingmachine one word dot com. Okay. And it'll say if you go forward slash blueprint, forward slash launch with a question mark, and then it's got the cookie. But just, just go to the selling machine, have an amazing selling machine, and you'll know, you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, I'm gonna mute my mic, play a few minutes, like a minute or so, not even, uh, just to let it show you the highlights. And the rest, again, folks, is up to you as to whether you want to follow suit with this here. So here we go. Hi, Mike McClary here again, and welcome to Lesson 5 of the Brand Builder Blueprint, where you're going to learn how to launch and rank your new product for immediate sales. Leading up to this lesson, you should have already learned how to create your Amazon Seller Central account, how to find the perfect product opportunity, how to find a supplier, how to have your product shipped to Amazon, and how to create and optimize your product listing. If you all right, folks. Now, I'm not going to play the whole thing because, like I said, it's 14 minutes long. So, um, you know, you could check it out for yourself. That's why I have it here. And, uh, you know, if you get it, like I said, again, I, I'm going to look into it myself. I don't really sell. I mean, I'm a, I'm a registered seller on Amazon. I just don't really sell on it too much. I'm basically an eBay seller. But uh, let me bump out of here. I'm going to take my glasses off. My eyes are killing me here. <laughs> and go, uh, let me just make this screen. There we go. Um, yeah. That that site there, the Amazing Selling Machine. I don't know too much about it. I've I've heard of it, uh, but I never really interacted with it. Got that far into it, uh, but you might want to check it out, you know. And I just want to say why I, why I got your attention. Hopefully, um, to all the new sellers and the, and the ones that are have been subscribed already. I just really want to say thank you again so much. Um, it really does mean a lot to me uh, doing this here. There were times I said to myself, you know when I was thinking about doing a reseller news or even just in general creating a YouTube channel I wasn't sure if I was going to get any traction or any you know feedback from anybody um, because I was always you know a little baffled on as far as like you know would people actually check out my YouTube channel would they be interested in the content I put out and uh, you know I am always open for suggestions or new ideas um, if anybody out there wants to share an idea with me or you want to hear me talk about a different topic Please don't hesitate to you know message me. Okay, contact me. Um, I got uh, my description and my comments. I put down there. I got my personal uh, you know email address. I have no problem with that. You know, if people want to you know discuss things with me or want to see me talk about certain things, please contact me. Comments are always welcome. And the other thing is to um, when it comes to uh, issues where you need additional information or you got a question about something. Um, don't hesitate and don't feel like it's it's a silly question to ask. If I don't if I can't answer it, I will get the information for you guys. I will hook up my crook, I'll get the information and I'll do the best of my ability to get that to you, you know. The reseller news, in case those are wondering uh, about what I do to resell news and how I do it as to why I put out I give you the websites and the URLs, whatever, it's because I don't want people to think I'm just throwing stuff off the top of my head. You know, anybody could create. You know, anybody could be a YouTube creator and just come out and start throwing things off the top of the head and making stories up. And you know, I like to be. I like to have the facts there. I like to. I like. I like my my followers, my subscribers, to know where am I getting the information from. You know, anybody could just come out here in the in the clear blue and tell you whatever they want and ramble on. So that's why if people always wonder why do you always tell people the you know the websites you get or. Um, when you're sitting there telling the date, you're always giving the dates because I don't want to. I don't want. You, I want you to know the content is is fairly new. 
if I get stuff on the fly and I'm not too busy, not stepping out of the house, running an errand, doing some kind of chores around here, um, I will update it right away. But sometimes I can't always get to it. I can't always get to do the reseller news, like on a specific day or whatever, because there is, there is an inconsistency. I've been trying to do it every day for seven days a week, okay? Um, that's why I came up with the reseller news weekends. You know, I figured, why do it Monday through Friday? Why not have the reseller weekends? So uh, for those who do follow me and subscribe, uh, you may well, you, 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 you're going to probably see, you know, throughout the course of the week, if you do follow uh, a lot of, um, not a lot, but when they come out, you're going to see the reseller news hit more. You're going to get more hits with the reseller news than the other stuff I talk about. I also go under another, um, my topics is too, I always go under rjpc.com. Uh, that's why I'm talking about different things outside of reselling. I might want to share something with you, or it could it could lead into reselling, you know. But uh, for the most part, uh, when I do come out and talk about like personal things on that on that uh, topic, it'll go on to rjpc.com, and I'll introduce it that way. You know, I'll just come out when I start the video. Welcome to rjpc.com, and I'll give you the date and time, whatever you know, the date as to when uh, I'm doing it, and uh, then I'll like, expand on that topic. Something I feel that's that that needs to be you know addressed to you guys out there, and to all the YouTube community, um, I will you know I will do it. You, you may you may see me produce two videos, maybe like outside the reseller news. I may do an additional one. It might be something on the fly. I might have seen something I might want to share with you guys right away. I don't want to wait till tomorrow. Oh, I don't want to wait till you know do do it like ten hours later. Um, I I monitor my emails. Oh, pretty much all day I'm on this computer from what seven o'clock in the morning till what twelve at night midnight here on the East Coast so uh, I'm always monitoring stuff plus I get little messages that pop up on my screen and when I do get them uh, I do look at them and I will respond to them uh, I get when I and the same thing applies when I get comments on my YouTube channel uh, if I get them and, and as long as they're not spam or there are anything nasty comments I'll respond to you right there and then again unless I step out I got other things taken care of, and you said, let's say you send a comment or a message to me on my YouTube channel, and I don't get back to you for a couple of hours. It might have been because I had to step out and do something. I am, just to let you guys know, a one-man band, okay? Uh, yeah, I have family that may help at times, but everybody works, you know, and my daughters are not here at times. They got full-time jobs and stuff, so, uh, you know, I do it right now. I'm doing this solo. I'm a one-man band, like I said, but for the most part... Um, I will respond to your comments as long as they're nice. I have no problem responding to them. And uh, again, I do hope that, and this goes to the present and the new subscribers on this channel, I hope you do get something out of this here. Um, I don't always get comments. I mean, not, not, not saying always, but on some of my videos, uh, people have commented that they like my videos. You know, keep telling, keep doing them. I like the information is good. And I like getting those type of video, uh, those comments. They, you know, you might say oh, they're praising your your YouTube channel. Well, if you want to call it that, that's nice. If you, if you want to just say they're just being very nice and uh, you know sharing their thoughts and about how they how they like the content I'm putting out, I, I take it as that. I don't take it as um, you know that they're you know uh, you know looking at my YouTube channel as something the greatest thing around but uh, I do appreciate that there though you know I do appreciate the people sharing that information with me and uh, I'm trying to make this channel grow folks I don't have many subscribers but the subscribers I do have I you know if you could stick by me that'd be great you know I really like to um, grow this channel really big with a lot a lot of followers I'd love I wish I could have millions of followers you know but uh, I don't know if that'll ever happen may not probably won't but um, I am going to keep this YouTube channel uh, with clean content. This is a clean content channel, as I said in many other videos. I'm sorry about the, the subscribers. They hear the same story over and over again. But for the new ones, or people just hitting this channel, it is a clean content channel. I don't discuss religion or politics. And I don't use profanity in here or any crazy talk. And uh, I also started this thing called the His Initiative Program. That's my thing, my thing I made up, which is to help inspire and share. And uh, that's what I like to do, folks. I like to help people out. I do like to inspire them, and I do like to share, uh, share information. And that's what it's all about. And, you know, if you want to be updated on, on topics that come out or you want to hear certain things I talk, I talk about, check out my, first of all, check out my other videos if you can, not all 660 of them, whatever. But, you know, check, just if you could scroll down and pick out some different uh, topics, whatever. You might see a good majority of reseller news. Check it out and see what, you know, you might like something. You might like what I have to put out there, you know. But um, I just want to say again, thank you so much. And with that, I'm going to sign off. 
My name is Rich Bassini. Today is October 8th, 2018. You're watching the Reseller News. Until next time, bye-bye now.